Inside Africa in association with Zenith Bank. It's a story of reimagination and reinvention. And for us, this is gold. Of breathing new life into items left behind. You cannot even imagine it can turn into something beautiful. From glass to plastic, art to activism. A world of possibilities is opening up thanks to people reframing the things found around them. If you can make a boat out of this material, it just shows you how valuable this material is. These are the innovators closing the cycle of waste in Kenya. This is Inside Africa. In the high plains south of Kenya's capital city, peeking through the trees on the edge of Nairobi National Park, is a place of wonder. How do I want people to feel? I, I think happy, actually, but I, if, if you want to break that down, more like they're wandering into a sort of uh, a fairyland of glass mystery of the possibilities of the things that you can do with our wonderful and magical material. Anselm Crows has been working with glass for more than 40 years. It wasn't until 1990, after returning from a glass-making apprenticeship in Holland, that he would open his own workshop here in Kitingela. From speckled to striped, small to spectacular. What makes this place unique is that every object produced and eventually sold at Kitingela Hot Glass started as something quite different. We're artisanal glass makers. We recycle and use window and bottle glass to make our products and the elements of our larger products. Every year, I'd say we repurpose about 70,000 kilos of scrap glass into um, beads, tableware, goblets, vases, chandeliers, plates, anything that really we can think of and our hands can make. With no centralized glass recycling system, Nairobi's household and construction waste has expanded within the city, according to Anselm. Sorted and cleaned, each wheelbarrow load amounts to hundreds of items of art. The whole, what we call Juakali, so the sort of hot sun ethos of repurposing or reusing, it runs integral through the fabric of this society. And when we started recycling, it wasn't because recycling was uh, the ethically correct thing to do, it was the sensible thing to do. It was cheaper, it was, uh, there was available material. Under the studio's towering dome, the furnaces run 24-7. William Gitonga is the chief glass blower. If you work with glass, you learn a lot each and every day because uh, you can think of something and uh, you can create it in a way. If you see scrap glass, uh, you cannot even imagine it can turn into something beautiful. Welcome to Kinagala Glass, here you are. This is a blowing uh, studio. On this side, we have uh, our furnace. Uh, the temperature of our furnace is 1100 degrees, whereby we melt our glass in there. On the other side, we have a pipe warmer over here, of which we use to uh, warm our pipes. Uh, our pipes should be hot at the tip here, hot enough so they can gather glass in the, inside the furnace. On the other side here, uh, we have uh, my friend Omosa here is preparing the the, the, the color, we have the color over here, where he collects glass from the furnace and smears the color on top here. As you can see, our glass cools very fast because it's recycled glass. 
so we have to continue reheating each and every moment. The fact that we blow window glass, that isn't a common thing. Window glass is not a very forgiving medium. It stiffens over a very short temperature range. It requires us to be more accepting of what might be regarded as imperfections to glass purists, like variations in thickness or extra bubbles or tool marks. One of the shop's major clients is Kenyan gin maker Procera. This is what you're making, gin bottle with a blue dot. Use the jacks, shaping the lips, at the same time using the wood to shape the lip. This piece of tool here is to make sure that the cork fits. For William, his work with discarded pieces of glass is about more than the finished product. In my life, uh, I grew uh, in a ghetto, which is it's a very hard life. You are in a situation like that, uh, you have to struggle or to see the other side of life, to see myself standing here and doing glass art. It creates that strength and also uh, the mind opens and also you cannot adjust it like that because you are thinking of what you can do tomorrow and achieve more. From a pile of glass rubbish to an eye-catching work of art, those achievements can be breathtaking. 30 years ago, I certainly didn't think I would be still here <laughs> making glass. And that tells me that the love of what I did seems to have been the fuel for what we've done. I, I like the fact that we could be regarded as kind of a poster child for creative entrepreneurship, that you could, you know, imagine something and, and then think it's so.